Hey guys, what's up? Alec Florenta here, and we are back with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about this beast of an electric skateboard that I built. So those of you who follow me on my Instagram, may already know about this board because you've seen the stories. I post a lot of stories riding this thing on my Instagram. And I just want to answer this question because I do get it frequently. And it's, am I building these boards to sell? And the answer to that is, unfortunately, no, not at the moment. I am not building these boards to sell. I mean, later down the road, I might decide to start selling them upon special request or something like that. But at the moment, the answer is no, I will not be selling these boards. All right, guys, so first, I think we should talk about what this thing actually is and how it performs. So this thing is a high power, 10,000 watt electric mountain board that has the equivalent power to a small dirt bike. It does 45 miles per hour plus, has 30 miles of range, and it can even do jumps. It's super fun, and the only way I could really describe it would be it's very similar to a feel of snowboarding, but that doesn't even compare because this thing feels like nothing else. Now in this video, I'm not gonna be going over step by step on how to build it just yet, but here's everything you should know before taking on a project like this. Now, as far as skills required to build this thing, it's definitely on the harder side of DIY projects. So you're gonna need to know how to solder. You're gonna need to know a little bit about electronics and how they work. You're also gonna need to know how to work with power tools and hardware, because a lot goes into drilling the deck and mounting the deck and everything and mounting all the hardware onto it. Now let's talk about what parts you actually need to build this board. Okay, so obviously you're gonna need a deck. I recommend going with a carbon fiber one like this if you're looking to do jumps. Uh, if not, you can definitely go with the wood, but if you're really looking to do jumps, I recommend not going with wood because uh, this is what will happen. Okay, so you'll also need a super wide set of skateboard truck that have dampening springs to absorb some of the shock. And then obviously you're gonna need some rims and tires. I went with eight inch off-road mud tires here. You're also gonna need a powerful set of motors. You'll need a motor mount. You're gonna need pulleys, belts with the belts. You might find yourself going through a lot of them. That's why I 3D printed this. This is a belt cover that will go over there, which will help 
with all the debris that gets stuck in the belts and maybe lengthen the lifespan of these because I always have to carry spare belts on me because the last you want is to be a couple miles down the trail stuck on the side with a broken belt. I had it happen a couple times before and finally I said all right I should have spare belts on me all the tools I need to change it, and that's what I do now. So I carry a spare kit with me all the time. So you're also gonna need an ESC. ESC stands for Electric Speed Controller. Basically, it's the brains of the board. You're gonna need a box to store it in. I keep mine in a little case right back here, nice and close to the motors. Uh, this way I didn't have to extend the wires for the motors. I only have to extend two wires, which are the batteries. I go up over the bindings, up into the battery box. So now you're gonna need a set of batteries. There's a couple options you can go with for batteries. For myself, I have three sets of batteries. The first set was kind of retired now, but those were two five cell batteries in series. So making a 10 cell battery, which was about 5,000 milliamps, which gave me roughly around four and a half to five miles, which really was just not enough for this board because when you're going super fast, four and a half, five miles goes super quick. But those were the batteries from my old board. My old board is much smaller and takes up a lot less power. So they're the right batteries for that board, but not for this. So for this board, I went and got two sets of batteries just because I figured I'd have two different types of use for them. So when I'm playing around and I want to do some jumps and I want the board to be super lightweight, um, I have a pair of six cell 8,000 milliamp batteries. Uh, these are lipos, by the way. And I run them in a series, so I'm getting about 12S or 12 cell. Now, that gives me roughly around 10 miles, which is actually a decent amount of riding. Perfect for if you're just playing around in a little spot and you wanna do some jumps and do some fun stuff like that. It makes the board super lightweight because they're not heavy batteries. But then when I wanna go long range, I got these big batteries, which are two six cell batteries, which I get and I put in series, which makes 12 cell. And these are 22,000 milliamps and can give me roughly around 30 miles of range for when I want to do those super long range trips through some cool trails and just kind of enjoy the scenery and just ride and just keep going. So I got those two sets of batteries just for those two reasons. Now batteries can be completely up to you. You can really do whatever you want with that as long as you get the voltage right. You can get whatever size batteries you want as far as milliamps. It really all comes down to how far do you want to go. Now wrapping up this video, I just want to say this is a very tough and expensive hobby to get into, but if you do it right and kind of learn from my mistakes with you know, the deck and the belt covers and everything, this could be a really fun hobby to be into. You are setting yourself up for loads of fun and you're just gonna get addicted and it's a really fun growing hobby. So um, if it's something that really interests you and you have the skills to build this, I definitely recommend looking into it. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. Um, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It will help me out with the YouTube algorithm as I'm getting started here. And don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next one.